Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re-up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bay you I see it, boy. Your boy Kiss Magnolia Shorty. Yeah, you know I mean she done took that smoking thing, that smoking gun thing to another level. You heard me? Now you gonna hear me and her on there. It's only right. That's what I call real recognizing real. Yeah, you know I mean, ain't no charge, ain't no money involved, no lawyers, no paperwork. I see her out here grinding. I'ma help her elevate her grind. That's what I do. You know what I mean? WDSU sources confirmed tonight that one of the victims of a double murder in broad daylight earlier today was indeed a popular local rapper. Fans are turning to the internet to mourn the loss of the second female rapper to sign on with Cash Money Records, a national label that began here in the Crescent. We chilling in the sixth wall right now with Magnolia Shorty. What's good with you, baby? Nothing cool in there here in the studio about to get in there. You heard me that's, already. That's know what's up. What, what, what you been working on? My little new, my little new album about to hit. You heard me, Boss Blast Lady. You know what that's I'm what's up. You got any features on, on that thing you're doing? Yeah, I got Birdman on that thing. I got Chaotic the Kid on that thing. I got Be Jizzle on that thing. I got the, um, the, the Twins, the Malicious Shadani Kareem on that thing. I got a few artists on that thing. Y'all check it out. Miss T. I got Nobi. I got Court hard I got I got a couple of people that's what's up that's what's up well y'all heard it first we in the six wall Magnolia Shorty wish you the best baby we oh, out man right. Magnolia Shorty was like a sister to me you know what I'm saying I mean it ain't what she just meant to me it's what she meant to Louisiana it's what she meant to New Orleans you know she was like the queen of bounce you know she just was somebody that you let her be around you know what i'm saying like i mean she just was the best at what she do you know what i'm saying and i mean i'm i'm i'm, I'm really speechless right now because I'm, I'm 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 i it, re it really ain't sunk in yet it really ain't sunk in yet i mean i i, I bought her the cash money when she was like 12 years old you know what I'm saying? With our first LP, Monkey on the, Monkey on the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yep. When I heard that song, I brought it a baby, baby like it. We put a beat on it, you know what I'm saying? Me, Juve, and Wayne did a song with her. She did a couple of more songs, and the rest history. year old Renata Lowe, better known to her fans as Magnolia Shorty, was gunned down yesterday, along with another man. And today, thousands of people are commenting on a Facebook page dedicated to the rapper WDSU news reporter Sydney Chuan is live with the latest on the search for the killer. Sydney. Latanya, unfortunately, New Orleans police do not have any information regarding any suspects or motive in this case, but you mentioned Magnolia Shorty was gunned down yesterday. Her friend was 25-year-old Jerome Hampton. Both of them were gunned down in New Orleans East in the 6300 block of Bridgehampton Drive in the Georgetown apartment complex. We visited that apartment complex today, and you can see where the car that they were sitting in lost control after being shot at, careening into a fence. We saw workers today repairing that fence, as well as bullet holes still riddling uh, the wooden fence over there, LaTanya. And obviously, Simney, so many people mourning this loss, how is the music community responding? Obviously very uh, saddened by this news right now. She was a rapper. She was known as the Queen of Bounce, a type of rap here in the community. She was uh, the second female rapper to sign on with Cash Money Records, which is a national label, but started here in New Orleans. So her influence really taking the music community by storm right now. She had been recording for over 10 years, and they say that a lot of people had been working with her. They still have some tracks that had not been released, and they say they are going to continue to release her music in her Orleans memory. Parish Latonya. District Attorney Leon Canazero was firm as he described a 30 count racketeering indictment against 20 men in the 3 and G gang. He says the group conspired to distribute illegal drugs and used violence to gain and maintain control over the area where it operated near 3rd Street and South Galvez. They don't show any breaks to the people of this community. We're going to give them no breaks either. Authorities say the 3 and G gang is responsible for at least 10 murders in the last five years.
Yo, yo, we back. This shit is pop a lot. Mob, gang. We headed to Louisiana with it. The N.O. Chopper City in the ghetto. Now, if you've been around here or know about around here, you know murder is the M.O. Now, today, I'm going to be telling you guys the story of a shadowy figure that's going to forever live in infamy within New Orleans street life who by all accounts during his time walking and stalking in the Crescent City and will find his name mentioned with some of the most infamous as well as famous names to come out of New Orleans. And this person that I speak of is going to be a guy by the name of Jerome Man Man Hampton. Man Man, though only 25 at the time of his death, would find his name smack dab mentioned in some of the most infamous times in the city's history within the last 30 years. Man Man, who spent most his life in the city of New Orleans, was born to Laura Davis and Jerome Tapp, had five other siblings, according to his obituary. Now, I'm not quite sure when he jumped off the porch, with the Houston Police Department's website saying that he was born on March the 12th, 1982. But looking back at his life and crimes, Man Man Hampton is going to represent a time in New Orleans history of lawlessness and anarchy. And when I say those words, I say them lightly. And there will be a few things that I would encounter coming up that would bring me to that perspective. And one of the first things would be watching a C Murder produced documentary or DVD titled Straight Out of the Projects. Now, if anybody else seen this DVD, I need y'all in the comment box. Now, I know it was another DVD that featured MOP, but specifically talking about the C Murder edition, they would have him traveling to the different projects in New Orleans. The Calliope, the Melf, Magnolia, some of the names that we know all too well now due to the stars that had come out of the city. And while traveling during this documentary, he would be going in several homes and you would encounter personalities during the DVD that would end up dying before the documentary was even finished for production. But that wasn't even a main thing that shook me, even though it was upwards more than five people. I want to say it was like seven or nine people that during the course of shooting this documentary would end up dead because watching the documentary after the person would speak, they would show some sort of tribute. But the most key part of that documentary would be when he would be visiting some household and there was a gentleman in this house, if I'm not mistaken, he was white. And see, murder would go into topic to how it is very popular for in New Orleans after someone turns the age of, I think it was 12, that their parents would put a life insurance policy on them because that's the age where anything almost can happen to you. And that was shocking to me. But later on, and only a few years later, one or two, I would be at some sort of dentist appointment or something, or maybe a doctor's appointment. And in a waiting room, they had a series of Time magazines. And I picked up one that was titled Gangs in New Orleans. And in just the 10 minutes or so before them calling me to the back, I would read about chaos and about crime and about essentially mayhem in the city of New Orleans where they were pretty much unable to solve homicides. And I can't remember the exact rate that they have for unsolved homicides, but it was astounding. And they said things in that article like New Orleans should be compared to Iraq and different things like that. And this is kind of way before like they would blow up the whole Chirac craze. And I still would never forget after reading that article, me not even being a conspiracy theorist at all made me wonder, like, was Hurricane Katrina planned? Because this shit is how you going to stop this shit? And mentioning Hurricane Katrina, a lot of cities was really introduced to the city of New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina and two almost more than others. I'm going to say Atlanta and I'm also going to say the city of Houston. 
And the city of Houston is really where everything is going to begin to unfold with Man Man Hampton. Now, reading that Time Magazine article would be the first time I would hear about Ivory Be Stupid Harris. And in that article, they talked about a group he was loosely associated with called the Dooney Boys and how he essentially took his act of crime from New Orleans on the road with him to Houston. And just like Be Stupid, according to the Houston Police Department, Man Man Hampton will also get his hands dirty in Houston. But the seeds of that incident in Houston would start on November the 26th, 2003, when adored and beloved New Orleans icon Soldier Slim would end up being gunned down. And with a killing of that magnitude, I'm sure the whole city felt it. But based on my research, it hit Jerome Man Man Hampton a lot harder than others. And I'm going to explain my theory about that a little bit later. But in the wake of Soldier Slim's death, the New Orleans Police Department would suspect two people. A guy by the name of Jarrell Smith, who we have covered on this channel, as well as another gentleman by the name of Stephen Kennedy. And Stephen Kennedy would be important to the story of Man Man Hampton because... Because at one time, according to the Houston Police Department, right before the turn of the year in 2006, on December the 28th, they would allege that Jerome Man Man Hampton, as well as Ivory B. Stupid Harris, would be involved in the homicide of said Stephen Kennedy, who authorities would find that night on 1303 La Concha Lane in Houston, Texas. After details of the murder of Stephen Kennedy would come out, authorities would allege that it was a retaliatory murder on behalf of New Orleans legend, Soldier Slim. The Houston Police Department would go on to say that Man Man Hampton, as well as Be Stupid and several other gentlemen they traveled from New Orleans to Houston with, would be partly responsible for a series of violent crimes committed by New Orleans evacuees. Presumably, after fleeing back to New Orleans from Houston, Jerome Hampton would be taken into custody on March 12th of the next year after he would fire shots at New Orleans police officers that was trying to apprehend him. And it would be at that time where they say he was not only being eyed for that murder of Stephen Kennedy in Houston, but also for a murder that would occur in Mardi Gras a few weeks before his capture. It has also come out that Man Man Hampton had possibly had a romantic relationship with iconic New Orleans bounce rapper Magnolia Shorty, who most people know as the first female to be signed to Cash Money Records, as well as her being immortalized on Drake's super hit, In My Feelings. A lot of media outlets, a lot of media outlets to this day say that if Magnolia Shorty who was married at the time, didn't have a relationship with Man Man Hampton. She would still be alive today as on December the 20th, 2010, she would be headed back to her apartment to get something right before heading to Miami, before heading to a bounce festival that she was scheduled to perform at. She would pull up to her residence in the gated community called the Georgetown of New Orleans. When, according to police, as she would pull through the gate, another car would come behind her and circle around her and essentially block her in. And it would be then when two men would get out the car and proceed to spray her vehicle with bullets. Rumor would even have it that one of the men would jump on top of the car, firing into it. As police would arrive to a crime scene littered with an outrageous number of bullets, they would determine that Magnolia Shorty was not the only occupant in her vehicle. And it would be three years from the death of Magnolia Shorty in 2013, where 20 members of a violent New Orleans gang by the name of 3NG would be indicted and linked to 10 murders, two of those being Magnolia Shorty as well as Jerome Man Man Hampton. Another one of those murders, and probably the most heinous of all, would be the murder of Kiara Holmes that occurred on December 18th, 2011, where they would say the gang was also targeting Jerome Man Man Hampton. And during the course of putting this episode together, 
it had me think like, wow, Jerome Man Man Hampton was involved in two of the most legendary or mentioned deaths, especially as far as music is concerned with the murders of Magnolia Shorty, as well as Soldier Slim. And looking at the information got me thinking, what would make somebody commit a retaliatory act for a famous person? Was it just they like this famous person? And I have to think it's more than that after looking at Soldier Slim's obituary, which shows Soldier Slim as well as his father. And then looking at Jerome Man Man Hampton's obituary and seeing that his father also shared the last name of Tap that Soldier Slim and his father share. Now, me personally, knowing how small the South is, it got me wondering, with their family sharing the same last name, was there any kind of family relationship between Man Man and Soldier Slim? I even heard rumors and read places where they said that B. Harris, as well as Man Man, was hitters for Soldier Slim. None of those theories have been proven, but I definitely need my people from New Orleans if they know anything about the relationship between them two, if they had any run-ins with Man Man, if they heard any stories about Man Man that we didn't mention. Y'all get in the comment box, y'all flood it. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trail spill shit is dropping and we gonna be back with some more ASAP. This shit got pop a lot. Shout out to the NO, we gonna be back ASAP. Y'all know y'all like home base. And y'all tap in on IG, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We're going to be back ASAP. Mob gang.